How do you define yourself and why is that important? Stay tuned. This is Damon Cart from NLP Gym. NLP Mind Hack, defining your identity. If you haven't already, please click subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can get these videos on a regular basis. How do you define yourself? This is not a question that we hear very often, unless of course you're putting together your online dating profile and then you have to start figuring out who you are and how do you want to project that to the rest of the world. This is a very important question because how you define yourself influences how you relate to the world around you, how you relate to other people, and ultimately it, re it influences who you become. But the first thing to know is you can't define yourself apart from your environment. You are part of your environment and anytime you go to define yourself, you have to define yourself in terms of your environment. For example, there's no such thing as an inside without an outside. There's no such thing as an outside without an inside. We kind of walk around with this idea that we're just these independent universes that just walking around and that if everything ceased to exist that we would somehow still exist and we in, we exist independent independently of our environment or others or the world around us but of course that's not true we define ourselves by generalizations and similarities so um i have brown eyes and if i see someone who has brown eyes i notice that similarity and so i notice that they're I, that is part of me and that is part of that other person and this is what we have in common. Same thing with like, what do I do? Well, I practice NLP. Oh, you practice NLP too. So we start pulling together these generalizations, defining ourselves by similarities of other people and similarities even sometimes with people, the objects around us and just our general environment. We also identify ourselves or define our identities by what we are not. And this can create a big problem. We often like to say, well, I'm not like that person. I'm not a cruel person. I'm not this, I'm not that. We see people and we judge them and we try to separate ourselves or compare ourselves to them by saying, well, at least I'm not like that person. When I coach people, the first thing I ask them is, what is it you want? And it's amazing to me how people will spend a lot of time and they have a lot of detail about what they don't want. Well, if you're more clear about what you don't want and there's more sensory experience going on in your brain or sensory based data in your brain about what you don't want the tendency is you're going to create more of that because your unconscious doesn't know any better you're just feeding it a lot of sensory data about the things that you don't want when people tell me that what they don't want I'll, I'll, that's usually where the problem starts and I'll tell them okay I understand and <laughs> you don't want to be broke. I understand you don't want to be lonely. What do you want instead? And I get them to start focusing on what it is they do want in sensory-based terms. So when you start focusing on what you see, hear, and feel, taste, touch, all of the five senses, and you start focusing on that, on what it is you want and how they show up in the five senses, well, you're basically communicating to your unconscious this is what we need to focus on, let's move toward this. What happens is, it's natural for us to move away from chaos and move toward clarity. We don't like confusion, so we're going to constantly move toward what makes sense and what we're clear about. So again, if you're more clear about what you don't want versus what you do want, and you're feeding that sensory um, data and experience into your mind, then you're going to get more of that because that's what's more clear to you. That's what makes more sense to your unconscious. The same thing goes for how you define yourself. If you say, I'm not cruel, what images do you have to make in your head? You make images of cruelty. And then you say, okay, but I'm not that. But that's not how your unconscious takes this in. You, you have to access what you don't want in order to constantly define yourself by what you don't want. So it's so important that you turn this the other direction and get very clear about what you do want and clear about who you want to be. And there exists this sensory based data in your experience to pretty much have any quality of identity that you want. So if you want to be, instead of a cruel person, you want to be a kind person, you would pull in sensory based data of you having experiences of being kind, when the times that you were kind to people. What did you see? What did you hear? How did it feel? 
And you can also do that the same for even acts of kindness that you weren't involved in. If you're just feeding that into your brain of uh, seeing someone uh, act in a kind way, once again, you're focusing your mind on that's what you want. That's what's clear to you, so you're likely to move in that direction. A good example of this, and one I've, I am guilty of, <laughs> is I was very clear. Uh, my parents are good people, but I was very clear there was a lot. I didn't want a parent like my parents. I wanted to do, I had a lot of ideas about how I would, the kind of parent I wanted to be. However, I didn't get clear about those, and I didn't use sensory-based experience, or I didn't future pace that using sensory based um, data like images or movies of me parenting in the way that I wanted to parent and maybe hearing the words that I would actually say. And so when you don't have this, it's easy to default to the sensory based experience you do have. So I had a lot of sensory based experience of my parents raising me, of course, because they raised me and I, was, I got first hand experience of that. So because I didn't have a lot of sensory-based experience about the kind of parent I wanted to be, guess what? I defaulted in a lot of cases and found myself parenting very much like my parents parented me. Again, sorry mom and dad, that's not an indictment of your parenting, it's just we should get better as parents. We should take what's good from what our parents, how our parents raised us and then correct the mistakes as well and become the parents who we want. But you've heard this saying before, like, oh my God, I've become my parents. Why? Well, because that sensory-based data is very real to you and that's stored up inside your memory. And you probably haven't spent a lot of time creating sensory-based data, future pacing, the kind of parent you would like to be. Or taking moments as a parent that you felt like, oh wow, I'm the kind of parent, I'm acting in the way that I wanna be as a parent. And then using that sensory-based data to say, to future pace, a feed forward system. This is the person I want to be. So why do so many of us focus on who we don't want to be? Why is this so common? Well, because fear is very powerful. You've heard in television news and newspapers, if it bleeds, it leads. We fixate on fear. So why is this? Well, thousands if not millions of years ago, the ones, the people, your ancestors who focused on, who didn't let their eyes off of a threat, were the ones who survived. If there was a saber-toothed tiger around, it's the people who took their eyes off the saber-toothed tiger, who took their eyes off the threat, who got eaten. It's the ones who survived who were the ones that watched the threat and never let the threat out of their sight. Jump forward thousands if not millions of years later, and we live in a society, most of us live in a society where there's not, th there's not major threats like that. But when we see it on the news, we see it on a newspaper, we fixate, our eyes go right to that because it's in our evolution to do that in order to survive even though it doesn't pose a real or imminent threat. But because we have consciousness, because we know these things, we can change that way of thinking. We can start focusing on and fixating on the qualities that we want to embody and, and, and act in ways that of the kind of person we want to be, so we can train our minds to focus on that sensory data of who we want to be. The truth is, the greatest threat to us now is that unbridled fear, that letting fear get out of control, letting fear control us. We act out in very reactive ways. If we were able to eliminate fear of things that aren't really threats and refocus our minds on what, who we want to be, what we want out of the world, and what it is that we want, rather than engaging in all that fear, especially fear that isn't really about a true threat, there would be a lot less violence in the world and we would get along a whole lot better. So when you think about who you are, do you define that in terms of who you are not? Or do you define it in terms of who you are? If you do, turn this around. Back to the example of cruelty. If you say or you think of yourself as not a cruel person, then what are you? Are you a kind person? Use whatever word fits for you. So take whatever you define yourself as not being and turn it into a positive. Who are you? What are the specific qualities of who you are? And what experiences do you have of that? Real experiences or even imagined experiences or someone else's experience. You can borrow other people's experiences and bring that sensory data in. Meaning you need to see, hear, and feel what that means to have that quality, to be that kind of person. 
And the more you focus on that, the more you are feeding your unconscious and you're nourishing your unconscious to become the person who you want to be. So anytime you catch yourself defining yourself by who you are not or who you don't want to be, stop that pattern of thinking, turn it around and think about, okay, if I'm, if I'm not this or if I don't want to be this, who am I and who do I want to be in positive sensory based terms? This will change your life. Check out our website, nlp-gym.com. Follow us on Facebook for real-time updates on upcoming workshops and free practice sessions that I hold here in Santa Cruz, California. If you like this video, please click like right down here and leave me a message or ask me a question. I will follow up with you. Stay tuned to the end of this video so you can see how you can get your hands on a free NLP online training. Take care.